Hi, welcome to Minica Drivers Lifeline. We provide training for TFLs, self assessment, life in the UK, driving to retest, topographical assessment, B1, and more. And we do help uh, our brothers and sisters with many different kind of application, including private hire, passports, and many more. Anyway, the whole purpose of us being here today is to talk about TFL's CERU assessment that is a mandatory assessment for all the private hire drivers in London. Whether you are a new applicant or you are an existing driver. It was introduced a couple of years back and in my view everyone knew about it. However, the amount of phone call we receive every day regarding certain questions I would go in, I'm going to answer them today uh, on this presentation so all the um, all the questions are answered and you are fully informed about the assessment so let us uh, see what what are we going to look at today <clears throat> so we are going to talk about a brief description I'm not going to spend much time on that and how to prepare for, for your um, assessment as well as the notice period and um, how to cancel reschedule main focus will be on the what happens in the exam hall your question types your exam format markings pass score allocated points and etc this will be the main point um we'll be talking about and also we are going to talk about what happens if you are un unsuccessful and also we are going to take you uh, to through a mock test so you are you know exactly um, how your exam look like so let us start then uh, this Safety, equality, regulatory and understanding was introduced by Transport for London for all the private hire drivers in London in 1st of October 2000, on 1st of October 2021. As I've said before, all the existing driver must complete this assessment by 31st of March 2025 and anyone applying for a new license then they will have to complete this assessment as well as topographical and B1 is speaking and listening before they can be licensed. Um, so this assessment is based on this uh, private hired vehicle drivers handbook, which is a 52 pages document uh, that consists 10 sections. Um, so you will have to familiarize yourself with the whole process and it does um, get reviewed occasionally as TFL said but it has and changed it could be amended but it's not has happened since it was introduced now how to get prepared obviously you need to know in and out you need to know in and out of this handbook you need to understand the handbook really really and really well and this uh, in your test some TFLs officially saying is 36, some say 37 or 36 or 37 questions you have will have to answer them in 45 minutes. A lot of people make mistakes by just read the handbook and don't do any practice any mock tests and they turn up in the exam and they cannot manage their time because they are not used to um, the ex question type exam format and the speed they need to complete these questions. So let me give you a quick tip before we move on. So these are the 10 sections you have. You can pause the video and have a look at them at your own time. And this is section one and there is some hyperlinks to uh, some of the sections important points that you need to also if you click then you can learn more and it should benefit you Okay, and then you will have Let me tell you how the exam is like for example the first line here You must be age 21 or older when you apply for your license. This is the line that's been taken From the handbook then we have paraphrased the line we have changed the line in many different ways like for example, to apply for a PHV driver's license, your age must be 21 or above. You cannot apply for a PHV driver license until you are, t you are 21. So it's very unlikely that in your exam you will find the um, sentences uh, and the wording as it is in, in the handbook. So that's why you need to familiarize yourself with lots of mock tests and getting yourself ready when you prepare for the exam. There will be some question from outside the handbook as well that is not part but it's related. Uh, which we have most of them as our students tell us we have included included them in our uh, Practice mock tests and chapter questions now notice period is really interesting because um, First of all if you are a new applicant you normally get a month 
you normally get a month to get yourself a DIB. However, for existing driver, it's really very depending on what we don't know. So some people get a month date, some people get even more than a month, like some people have got five weeks and some people get two, three, four days as well. Let's just look at this typical example. The date of the letter was 30th of September 2023 and the date of the assessment was 4th of 4th 10, 2023. This is October. So that's over four days. Some people even got two days, three days as well. So the best thing to do if you're an existing driver or new applica applicant, you must get yourself ready well in advance because you don't know when your date, date is going to be. Now, for any reason you are not able to attend uh, the assessment, any of the assessment, uh, topographical CERU or B1, um, TATFL says you make every effort and attempt to prepare and attend the assessment. However, if you are unable to do so, you need to send them an email as soon as possible on the email address you are seeing on the screen. We have a full guide and complete guidance on how to do so. Uh, on another video that's you can have a look at your own time if you need any help with um, cancelling or rescheduling your assessment now on the letter they send you there also is very step-by-step -step guidance to how to get to the test center with a small map as well so you should be easily you should be able to easily find the center the one on the uh, presentation is uh, one in the next to the O2 in North Greenwich now this this is the area i want to focus more on so once you arrive obviously you must um there's lots of people do their test at the moment so you will need to join a queue and obviously report the reception once this is done then your id will be checked in that tfl accept passport valid passport original passport not photocopies but if you are not able to take your passport with you then in this case then you can take a full uk or european economic area driving license and all the IDs that whichever ID you are presenting it must contain a photograph of yourself if you turn up without an ID then you will be refused entry that means you will not be able to complete your test on the day now your fees if you're attending the assessment for the first time is 36 pound for receipts it's 16 pound please make sure you take a card with you debit or credit card they do not accept um, American Express remember that please they do not accept american express please a lot of people get refused and turned away from the assessment center because they went there they wanted to pay cash so please go with your card and you don't want to be after doing all this preparation you don't want to return from the test center just because you did not take an id or you did not take a card for making payment now once this process is completed your photograph is taken so a lot of people said that some people are going to do their test and make them pass i don't know what is the basis of their comment or discussion whatever they say but your photo is taking making sure that you are the one yourself attended the assessment uh, once this process is completed then you are taken into another room another waiting area where you will be grouped with the people that is uh, they, who are attending the assessment at the same time as yourself and then a member of staff will come and brief you on the assessment once the assessment uh, briefing is done then you are taken into the exam hall and in that you will have a 50 minutes your survey assess for survey assessment your session will be for 50 minutes for language is about 10 15 minutes and topographical it was it is 90 minutes so when you there it will it will start again with a short presentation that explain how the assessment works and also you will have an opportunity to do two practice questions um, for you to answer that is not going to be counted towards your results and then once you are ready all this all of these are done then you can click on the start button and then you the, your test will begin there will be member of staff on on site in your exam hall to help you with any technical problems obviously they're not going to help you with answering your questions um so my advice to you is if you um, finish your test early before 45 minutes please do review go through all the questions again so making sure you have answered and you answered them correctly don't rush it take it easy but again don't get lost as well in your exam um, and then miss out you must answer all the question before you come out and this give you a better opportunity to pass your exam now point allocation now TFS website and, and they don't cl clearly say which questions contain 
uh, what po what points. Now, however, this is something I have put together by speaking to our students who attend the examination. Single multiple choice question, which is the majority in your exam, it contains one points. Double multiple choice, meaning you have to answer two answer, answer two. You have to select two answer for questions. It's two points. Comprehension, that's widely known as paragraph. It contains two points and also fill in the blanks, two points. Uh, question is um, how many, uh, so, so that's 36 question, 45 minutes that we have already done, covered and told you. Now, question is how many correct answer do you need to, um, do you need to pass your assessment? It depends. Some people get five fill in the blanks. Some people get 17 fill in the blanks and it's ranges in between. So the less fill in the blanks you have because it contains more marks then it's better chances you have by answering only multiple choice questions. So it's, there is no straightforward answer that you answer 23 question, 24 question and you pass your assessment. However, one of our students who was not very efficient in English, he answered only 23, 23 questions, only multiple choice and he uh, passed his assessment with 63% marks. So um, he's, he 23, all through 23 was multiple choice, then double, and then the paragraph, and then few, few of the, uh, what you call it, uh, fill in the blanks. So if you are lucky enough, then if you get less, then obviously, but if you get more, if you get more fill in the blanks, then obviously you'll have to get more fill in the blanks. This. As I said, there's no straightforward answer, straightforward answer to the question, how many you need to, how many you need to, how many questions you need to answer to pass your assessment. It really depends on what types of question you get. Now, some this, these are the things I have seen um, on many mock tests and online um, that some people do make question set with true and false uh, false answers. It does help with your preparation, true, honestly, but it, does, it is not included in your exam. Also, there will be no answer with all of the above answer and there will be no partial marking on fill in the blank questions. And I will explain this uh, the last bit when we go to the uh, go to completing a mock test for you. So now, what is the pass score? It's sixty percent. So if you even if you got fifty nine point eight nine, you were not passed. You have not passed the um, assessment. So you need to score fifty six percent, and uh, your result could come out in two, three, four, five days, and it could be two months, three months. Someone just my friend who scored hundred uh, percent, his result came probably uh, even it took probably more than two months. And um, one, another student uh, who informed me yesterday that a new applicant got his results after six weeks. And some people do get in two, three days as well. And their uh, their attempt for the second or third attempt also in a very quick succession. So it really depends um, on what we don't know, why it's the delays we don't know that only TFL can answer. Now, what happens if you are unsuccessful? Obviously. TFL officially says that you have another attempt. However, we have in reality, and I have made another video on this as well, that people are getting third and fourth attempts for their assessment. So um, even if you exhaust all the attempts and you, you have failed and you have not, not able to, uh, pass any of the assessments then what will happen you will have to reapply for your license if you want to continue to be on this profession in this case what will you have what what will happen is that you will have to pay all the fees all over again then you have to pass topographical assessment english language assessment as well as survey assessment before you can obtain your license now question is how can we help we have got a fully computer based facility for you where we provide training on all the relevant areas that we have talked about and um, we can explain that every each section each line of the handbook to yourself and then you will have an opportunity to take several tests chapter question as well as mock test to get yourself ready for the assessment and obviously you can get, have access to the mock test and support until you sit your assessment from us and remember um, all our practice assessments are computer based and, and they're online we don't use any paper because your exam your assessment your test will be on computer online and we currently support english bangla urdu and hindi and we are looking into adding on kurdish uh, Somalian as well as Arab and other languages as well um, so best way to if you want to book yourself for a training is to call on the number text or whatsapp that you see on the screen and if you rather want to take advantage you don't need any training just you want access to the exam software that is a replica of TFL software uh, that you can see on the screen then obviously you can purchase that from our website so now let me take you 
so here is the replica of our exam software i've already logged in and this clearly will show you once you're logged into the screen that how many attempts you have how many days of validity that you have i have a separate video in regards to how to purchase it uh, from our website and how to access it and you can have a look at it on your own time um, if you're using this on your phone there is one thing you need to do as you can see on the screen that you go to your browser setting and turn it to um, on the desktop mode um, and best to use google chrome for better results so you click on attempt an examination and we're going to do one mock test let's choose mock test number 11 continue and as he says if you're using a phone then obviously you make it sideways landscape and then it's for better result and I, I, as i have said you change the setting so let's continue begin uh, so 37 question 42 minutes in exam you have 45 minutes we give you 42 so you are ready um, prepare to answer them in time and you have some time in hand to review your answers at, in the exam hall so once a PHB has been licensed who to whom the vehicle license is given to the driver the register keeper the PHB operator the, the register keeper in which circumstances a PHB might be given an exemption which means that the license disc do not have to be displayed in some exceptional circumstances not extraordinary not uh, a PHB can never know it can be exempt to whom do you must make details of your insurance available to at all time it is the police when they ask you for your insurance details no question asked you just simply hand it over to them without asking any question at all and then we go to the next one is airports airp airports are private property what can you do about taxes what the, what sort what can they do about taxes and phbs the airports um, make their own rules bylaws bylaws doesn't mean law it means rules and regulations sometimes you're not able to come a situation if that is the case which one of the following you should not do so it is asking you to select the incorrect answer it's asking you to select the incorrect answer get to your vehicle when possible and try to take time to calm down this is something you do do not consider using a long worker device get away from that this first and the last one is something you should do and the middle one you should not be doing so it's asking you to select the wrong answer and this is something you select accordingly which one of the following is correct in regard to unacceptable uh, behavior uh, you should never make comments or jokes about someone's age race religion disability sexual orientation and gender identity this is the correct answer you should make comment these are all incorrect options if tfl does investigate a complaint that relates to you what will happen with the result tfl will tell you the result of that investigation whenever they investigate something in this country they will tell you the results private hire drivers can stop to pick up or drop off passengers in many areas where there are rules in place to limit waiting or stopping which one of the following is not one of them it is um in most vast in places where loading is not allowed shown by marking on the curb on single or double on zigzag lines so all these three places you can pick up or drop a passenger on zigzag lines you cannot do it so i forgot to tell you one thing in your exam there is one thing there will be an option for you to flag a question and then review so flag a questions means that um, if you are struggling with a question then you can click on flag it and then if you then later on once you completed your test and you can click on review then you to bring you back to those flagged questions and then that you will be able to answer let's move on then which one of the following is correct in regard to entering bus lanes to pick up or drop a passenger a speed driver can stop where pick up now a PHP driver should never enter should enter and leave the bus lane in the most di indirect now a PHP driver should enter and leave the bus lane in most direct and safe way meaning when you pick up pick up and drop a passenger from bus lane you just go into the point that is standing and pick them up and they get, come out from the same point you don't um, wait there or prolong your waiting which vehicles need to pay the ULA charge unless exam? So this is one of the questions that is from outside the handbook. You don't find this question in the handbook, but it does come in the exams. Cars, motorcycle, vans, specialist vehicle up to the including 3.5 tons and minibuses up to including 5 tons. So this is the answers. Okay. So this is the answer that these are the vehicles that need to pay the congestion charges. Now, a PHB driver should drive at a speed within the speed limit and one that is appropriate for what? the situation environment and the weather conditions 
In regard to concentration, you need to focus on the road and be able to react quickly. Which one of the following you should not do? Again, it is asking you to select the incorrect answer. So get distracted. This is something you should not do. This is something you should not do. Get distracted by mobile phones, other electronic devices, music or passengers. This is something you should not be doing. Which one of the following is correct in regard to driving and alcohol and drugs? Uh, the police test for drug and alcohol use at the roadside to catch those who break the law. The test for drug and alcohol use at the roadside to catch those who break the law. law. The police test for drug and alcohol use at the roadside to catch those who break the, the law. Not TFL, it's the police, yeah, the police. So, next. What should you do if the passenger is visually impaired and ask you to guide them to the vehicle? Stand by the person to take a law. You should not be holding them. Stand by the person side and allow them to take hold of you. So remember that under no circumstances, unless it is an emergency, you're following instruction of emergency service, you should not be touching anyone. They should touch you. You allow them to touch, hold, or whatever it is. So you should not be doing that. In regard to assisting passengers, why should you always have a pen and paper with you? This one, this one come in the exam. So that you can write things down for passengers who have a problem hearing or passengers who do not speak much English. Next is, what is the Sharia Council ruling in regard to passenger with assistant? This comes in the exam a lot these days. Yeah, the train assistant dogs may, accom may accompany disabled people in PHU managed and driven by Muslims. So this is the answer. So this comes in the exam a lot these days. What should you do? What you do you need to ensure in regard to your behavior with all passengers, including children and adults at risk? It's, it is appropriate and professional at all times with everyone with everyone when gangs and organized crime groups use children and young adults to sell drugs what is what this is known as what this is known as county lines not country lines this remember this is question number 19 and we're going to select wrong answer country line what, whether the answer should be county line so i can show you how to review the answers as well what ride sharing can, can potentially introduce introduce um some safety risk for your passengers and then in regard to ride sharing a passenger may book a ride sharing journey by mistake if you stop to collect a second passenger and the first passenger was not expecting you to it may result into which one of the following tfl uh, revoking all i said no and understanding and argument so it's a very small chapter chapter 10 and many questions these days come from chapter 10 as is as it is reported by our students so focus on that as well so now we have moved on to two questions and before we go into this this section a message will appear on the screen should appear on the screen that now you need to answer more than one two ones answer two select two answer for this question for example which are the following should you consider in order to provide safe service for your passengers and to protect you as a driver checking the passenger name and destination before they get in the vehicle uh, being clear with the passenger about exactly where you are taking something these are the two answers remember this is from chapter four chapter number four so it's a protecting as a driver some of the changes you need to tell tfl immediately about which one of the following are them if you are not on the either no this not make it incorrect if you have a private or hire or taxi driver license with another licensing authority and that authority has suspended or revoked your license or refused a new application you have made if you are the subject of a mental health order or sexual offense this is from chapter number one so these are the changes you must tfl immediately about now you are move into, moved into comprehension again you should see a uh, message on the screen that will tell you that what type of question is there and then what answer you should keep so now this type of question answer does come out from this paragraph on top so it's really easy my technique for this is i read them first answer and match them and someone doesn't something doesn't make sense i don't even look at them for example it is important that you respond to tfl's request as tfl can only make licensing decision based on the information receive it is important that you respond to tfl request tfl can only make licensing decision based on the information received so this um 
line has changed a little bit the meaning is same so this is the correct answer and it's a match there tf will never write to you with the details of any complaints and ask for your comment tfl receive complaints become aware of any behavior that is not satisfactory tfl may write to you will never make it incorrect if tfl receives a complaint about you or becomes aware of any be aware of any behavior that it that is not satisfactory they will like take any action no, they will take any ac action they will investigate they may investigate so this is also an incorrect option now let's go to the next one the driver must carry the given exemption notice at all times when the vehicle is being used as a PHP um, in this case as you will receive an exemption notice which you the driver must carry at all times when the vehicle is being as a PHP again it's paraphrase it's changed line has been changed and then this is the correct answer the exemption notice must kept must keep at home um, must be kept at home should be the answer in some of some answers which is not the case because it's need to be carried a copy of the exemption notice must be given to the PHB open there is no mentioning of such thing on the in this in the paragraph so this is not a correct answer as well if your operator has a license to operate from a late night venue they can take booking outside the venue no operator has a license to operate from a late night venue the operator can only take booking inside the venue so this is a wrong answer if you if you approach people on the pavement or outside the late night venue to offer them private hire services you may be committing an offense uh, let's see. Um, approach your pavement or our side late night venue, offer them privacy. If you do this, you may be committing. So, this is the answer maybe committing an offense. You cannot accept a fare if the passenger has booked the journey through a licensed London operator. We don't even need to look at them because all journeys must be booked by a London PHB private hire operator. No type of sexual behavior between you and a passenger is ever acceptable unless both of you agree to it. No type of sexual behavior between you and a passenger acceptable even if both of you agree to it. So this makes this incorrect. TFL or the police will fully investigate all complaints and reports related to sexual behavior. Uh, TFL or the police will fully investigate all complaint reports and they will take appropriate action. So this is the correct answer. All types of sexual behavior between you and passenger is ever acceptable so the first line is not correct so now fill in the blanks so oh so we should have made some mistake anyway no problem we move on we make some mistake on the fill in the blanks fill in the blanks two things to remember you have to put the correct words in the box and also you have to put all the incorrect one in this box otherwise you're not gonna any marks so sort of people yesterday somebody asked me as well if there one fill in the blanks two fill in the blanks is correct are they going to go get full marks answer is no you have to get all of them correct and you have to put all the unused work in this box otherwise you know get you don't get no points when tfl introduced this survey assessment the fill in the blanks was like this one word missing from each cap which has now changed and i will explain in a bit this handbook this handbook is a complete statement not a statement because this a make it com uh, um, singular and this is the area of struggle for many of you we don't know where to put s where to put not put s where to put ed where to not put ed we're making another separate video on this um explaining all these rules and re regulation in a very simple way so keep an eye for it uh, we should we should release it very soon now of the laws and policy that london again it's a noun it's a capital it has to be capital letter l php drivers are subject to and should never should be used for for general guidance only next and this is what i am talking about now here you go so you got now in the gap you have got two three words missing for each gap as well so this has now changed for last few months it's a good six seven months now this change had has been made all our mock tests and chapter questions does replicate that as you can see so beginning of the sentence so obviously it have, have to be capital either this one or that that one one of the two because nothing else is with a capital letter so you must be aged 21 or older when you apply when you apply for your license there is no upper age limit there are there is no upper age limit next is you will need to do an assessment based on the handbook information in the handbook in the handbook it's not a noun so it's not cannot be capital uh, application so please read all of it carefully so let's move on to get a 
license to get a license so because of a is singular now we're going to make one mistake on this one we use the wrong word remember it's 31 okay and to take you will need to take a separate test to check your ability to select and plan a root look it's a making it singular again a root um root to a read a map and identify location as soon as you are licensed it is important that you keep in contact with tfl and respond to any letters emails or other forms of communication other forms of communication because it's already plural here because of the word form so you don't need to use communications anymore so these words i'm going to leave here instead of putting that so you see what happens and show you what happens now again the beginning of the letter is missing so either this or that so once a phb or not a car once a phb has been licensed the register keeper is giving given a vehicle license the license disc will be fixed to the front and the rear again it's not a noun so it cannot be capital rear windscreens of the vehicle the license disc um contain is plural here so the verb will be singular so contain such security features which means that the disc will be permanently this will because of this B it will be with ED damaged if you try to remove them if you try to remove them now PHB licenses PHB licenses is plural remember yeah PHB licenses lasts not it lasts for one year not last last for one year uh, if it was third person say, if it says a PHB license that would be lasts uh, the vehicle must have another licensing inspection so another referring to one more so one not inspection not approval before a new license can be issued we license can be issued so two more left you must make details of the insurance available to the police when you asked for them when you are asked for them you must also provide insurance details to a passenger or or a member of public or a this is wrong spelling member of the public if the vehicle you are driving is involved in a collision in a collision so next one last one PHP license and license disk must not be again B so we're looking for something with ING or ED P license must not be uh, damaged must not be damaged or changed and also you can look at the sentence as well look and after and or or the same form of the tense will continue so it if because it is changed it is also damaged same thing and also beginning of the sentence must be with capital um, you may not you should not no it's, it's not been given an option you cannot remove the disc at all so you should not remove the disc even if you are using the vehicle for private private purposes if, if there is a the each every something that indicates it would have been purpose so we have completed the test now so we can now click on the finish button and we have done it like good 10 15 minutes sorry 18 minutes so let's finish and let's see what's the score so it will clearly tell me my score and also it will tell uh, that i have passed um and what is the pass score as well so we have made some mistake as i said purposely and so let's let's review them uh go Oh, sorry this is something we completely skipped we could not we did not click on it you regard to bookings you are not allowed to pick up people on the street station airports including the street outside your operator unless they have done what booked you through a license I'm really sorry for that we completely missed it we didn't click on it as you can see like the previous ones there is no click so again if you miss some of the questions it's a good mistake that we have made that you can see it will show that tick one that and it will indicate that you have not answered the question okay let's go on move on i think it was question number 19 i believe that we skipped uh, made a mistake purposely count count till and here you go so this is what we have answered and this should have been the answer so you this is how you know and it will tell here on the screen as well that this is how um uh, this is an incorrect answer so let's move on and rest is all correct and then fill in the blanks oh here you go so fill in the blanks we made um to get a license here you go to get a license it should have been a license but it is um a 
to get a license this is what the mistakes we have made this is the mistakes we have made here uh, so you can see the correct answer on top license we have added an s so because of that it's all incorrect we don't get no points here and this one we left all the unused uh, words in the box we did not take them put them in this box and also this is a mistake so as i have said there's no partial marking you have to get everything correct to be able to get your full marks so now you have all the information about survey assessment that you required that you need it you have it now do get in touch if you need training or mock test purchase from our website uh, we have a very good pass rate about 90 percent at the moment for everyone that is coming through training at our center and also don't forget to like share comment on the video and subscribe to our